surprise for you. And this, this lovely woman right here just came up to me and said, hey, is that Tim and Ian Hess? And I said, it is. She said, well, I used to be his Sweet. teacher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he used to martial arts, right? Yeah, Mrs. Tweed, martial arts. Look at his face. <laughs> and Ian explained to me that he's really he's more of a lover than he is a fighter, so he doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> I'm gonna do a song on Capella now. And uh, this is one of my mom's favorites and uh, I'm just gonna give you a little heads up on this. So this song is uh, it takes place a long time ago. Okay, like the turn of the century, uh, the turn of the 20th century. And it was before you had phones. So before you had phones, when you were to call in sick, you couldn't call in on the phone. You had to uh, write a note to your boss to explain why you weren't gonna go to uh, work and you'd send it along with a coworker or a family member or what have you. You remember that, right? Uh, <laughs> I know, I'm a smart ass. Anyway. So, uh, so this is a song about a guy, he's, he's uh, a bricklayer who's had the worst day of his life. And because of that, he's gonna call in sick and he's sending a note to his boss of why exactly he's not gonna show up and it's called Dear Boss and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, ready, here we go. Dear Boss, I write this note to you to tell you of my plight. And at the time of writing, I am not a pretty sight. My body is all black and blue, and my face a deathly gray. And I hope you'll understand why Petty's not at work today. I was working on the 14th floor, some bricks I had to clear. And throwing them down from such a height was not a good idea. The foreman wasn't very pleased, and being an author saw it. He said I'd have to take them down the ladder in me hard. Now shifting all these bricks by hand, it seemed so awful slow. So I hoisted up a barrel and secured a rope below. But in my haste to do the job, I was too blind to see. That the barrel filled with building bricks was heavier than me. Now I went down and I cut the rope and the barrel fell like lead And clinging tightly to the rope, I started up instead I shot up like a rocket, and to my dismay I found Halfway up I met the bloody barrel coming down <laughs> Now the barrel broke my shoulder and to the ground it sped And when I reached the top I struck the pulley with me head Now I was still under shock from that almighty blow. When the barrel spilt up half the bricks, 14 floors below. Well, when the bricks had fallen from the barrel to the floor, I now outweighed the barrel and started down once more. Still clinging tightly to the rope, I headed for the ground. And I fell amongst the broken bricks that were all scattered around. And as I lay there moaning, I thought I'd seen the worst. When the barrel struck the pulley beam and didn't the bottom burst, a shower of bricks fell over me, and I hadn't had a hold. And as I was losing consciousness, I let go of the bloody rope. Now the barrel being heavier, it started down once more and landed right across me as I lay there on the floor. It broke three ribs in my left arm and I can only say that I hope you'll understand why Patty's not at work today.